Hey there, Math Moment Makers. It's Kyle here from MakeMathMoments.com. And uh, today I had an opportunity uh, to jump into a grade three classroom. And uh, while I was in there, I thought I would record my screen anyway to get a sense of what the uh, vibe was like. Uh, today we engaged in an awesome lesson on fractions and uh, the conversations were rich. Uh, students were sharing their screen. We had them paper folding. We did all kinds of great stuff. Um, so I'm going to quickly uh, share where you can find this task and a complete unit that goes along with it. If you head to makemathmoments.com, you'll be able to hop over to our lessons and units uh, uh, screen over here or um, link. And from here, you'll be able to see all of our problem-based lessons and uh, many of which have a full unit that go along with them. The one that we did today was a modified version of the Woolly Worm Race. Uh, when you give that a click, you'll, uh, you'll be brought to our Woolly Worm unit. Uh, this unit is uh, probably more for your upper elementary, middle school crowd. However, today I modified it and uh, you can too. And actually, I'm going to take what I've modified and uh, when I get a chance, I'm going to put it up onto the website so that uh, those who are teaching our younger learners can engage in this particular lesson and uh, this series of lessons, this unit, with their own class. Um, so remember, head on over to makemathmoments.com, click on lessons and units, and check out our problem-based lessons and our units, they're all fully open for you to check out. Uh, just like this one here, you have access to all the different tabs, uh, sense making, the reveal, uh, extensions, and even the reflection prompts. And on day one of every unit, you actually have access to the complete teacher guide, which you can see up on the screen behind me here, uh, including student exemplars, uh, things to consider when you're trying to craft a productive struggle, all of the steps that you wanna to take to follow the curiosity path with your students, and of course, uh, what you wanna to do to set up your reveal. Now, the only thing that isn't available to you if you are not an Academy member are the actual downloads here, and also keep in mind that on day two and beyond, uh, the guide is only available for our, uh, our actual uh, members who are logged in. Okay. So on day one, you have the full teacher guide on the other days, you will need to become a member, uh, but you can do so 30 days on us and give it a shot. Uh, we're convinced that you're going to love it. Just like our over 800 members who are diving into these problem based units and courses and uh, wonderful community inside the Academy. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to actually share uh, the edited down version from my experience in the grade three classroom virtually today. So we did this at a distance and uh, I'm hoping you're going to enjoy the awesome conversation that we had and uh, I'll see you on the other side of this video. All right, and uh, sir, I'm gonna ask for you to kind of help me out with the chat and things like that, maybe like picking students as we go. Uh, I can tell already, I see all the cameras on, which is great. I love seeing everybody's faces. My daughter is actually in grade three. She's, uh, her name's Talia. So it's kind of it's kind of fun to get to hang out with all of you friends in a similar grade to my daughter. Um, so if you're ready to go, I'm looking in the chat here and I'm not seeing any messages yet. So I wanna make sure, is everybody with me right now? Is everybody okay? Is everyone awake and ready to do some exploring today? Great, I'm really excited to work with you all and learn with you all here. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna quickly share my screen and how we're gonna start, and I love starting as many of my math lessons like this, is by giving you an opportunity to do some noticing and wondering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share up my screen, and in a moment, I'm gonna be playing a short little video clip. Now, when you watch the video clip, if you have spotty Wi-Fi, like Sir said, it might be a little bit laggy or delayed, and I'm gonna ask that you just kinda hang with us because even if, let's say the video doesn't show completely, 
I'm still gonna ensure that you've got a good visual at the end to give us some things to notice and wonder about, okay? So no panic. Uh, if, it, if the sound isn't working for you or if it's kind of spotty, we're not gonna worry about that right now. It is a Monday morning and we know what Mondays are like for technology. Sometimes it doesn't work so hot. And uh, what I'm gonna have you do is anything and everything you notice or wonder, we're gonna have you share it in the chat. If you wanna share it verbally, you can put your hand up either in the camera or your digital hand and Sir can pick you as the video's playing so that you can share out loud, okay? Is everybody cool with that? Sir, are you cool with that? Put those worms below the green line, once they're on the string. No touch in the string, no touch in the worm, and absolutely no touch in the race board. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cheer these woolly worms on. These racers spent a lot of time and energy training these woolly worms for this race. Let's show them some appreciation. And the king in lane 17 is in an early lead. Here comes Muzzy Jr., the king. Down there in lane 7 is Flash. Flash and Woodcutter. Flash has stopped. And there goes Flash again. All and right. here comes Wildebeest, the king. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to keep those notices and those wonders coming along. Yeah, it might be something you noticed, like there was a flash. Uh, maybe, like, I don't know, I noticed a lot of, like, uh, words on the wall. Maybe there was a word that said flash. That'd be interesting if he wants to share a little bit more about that. Any other uh, ones you got there, sir? We'll try to jot down as many as we can here. I love it. Go ahead there, Lucas. What are you thinking? Oh, I love that. That sounds like a wonder to me. I definitely had a very similar wonder, wondering what is going on here? What are they doing? Oh, I love it. Paisley, go ahead. Ooh, lots of numbers. Yelling. Looked like they were pretty excited about whatever they were doing. Uh, and yeah, that was in the chat there. Awesome, awesome. Here's like a, a screenshot of part of it. And if I can like buffer... Um, what I might be able to do is like give you a, a few little glimpses here uh, because a lot of people are saying they had a little bit of a challenge trying to um, with their internet. So let me let me just kind of buffer along here. Like let's see like what is going on there. Did anybody else catch like did they say the word worm? Did they say anything? Like what did they say? Now we got some momentum going here, sir. Cool, super cool. Okay, sir, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually give everybody a little bit of information because we've got a lot to work with here. So first of all, um, one of the questions that I heard was like, what are they doing? Someone said, did they say worm? Uh, and are they real worms? And I, I wanna knock a few of these questions off the list right away. And I'm gonna confirm to you, they did say, just like Paisley said, they did say the word worm. Now that did come up and actually to kind of elaborate on that, they said woolly worm. Hmm, woolly, whoops. And I'm wondering, hmm, if anybody has any thoughts on that, feel free to put it in the chat, like woolly worm. I've never seen a worm that was woolly. I wonder if it's actually a worm or maybe it's something else. Um, some people were saying, were they real worms? And again, it's like woolly worms, real worms. I'm not sure. And what they were doing, I don't know about you, but to me, it looked like they were definitely doing some sort of race or competition. All right. So someone had, had said there was like a lot of yelling. There was lots of people there. There was like excitement going on. And uh, I, sir, is anybody in the chat helping us out with like whether they were real worms or anybody taking a stab on that? Or like, what are they saying? Maybe it's a caterpillar might be a woolly worm. Um, lots of good stuff going on. Sir, I'm going to share something here because I got another clip. And actually, like I said, this was a race. And actually, you are right, Mason. This was not real worms. They were real caterpillars and actually I learned recently that I think the woolly worm is a type of caterpillar. I think Paisley's confirming that for us. Uh, a woolly worm is a caterpillar. Really fluffy caterpillar and actually there is a race 
where people take woolly worm caterpillars and they actually race them. Like, I know this might seem a little crazy to you or me, but if you've ever been to like the Harrow Fair where they have like all kinds of different animal competitions, like some parts of the world, they love racing woolly worm caterpillars. And the question that I have, and I'm really curious about is who actually won this race? I wanna share with you a replay of the winning caterpillar and how this actually works, this race, it has a start and it's at the bottom of a string. Some of you might have seen that from the video, right? Some of you may have seen this string here. And what happens is the caterpillars start and they race and they go as far as they possibly can until the finish line. Now, if they meet the finish line, then they obviously are the winner, the first one to pass. But also after a certain amount of time, if they haven't made it to the finish line, then they just pause and they measure where all the caterpillars are. So the maximum distance they can go is one meter. Now, this one right here that you see on the screen is actually the winning caterpillar from this past year's competition, okay? And this is kind of what the race looked like. You know, the on, on their mark, get set and go. This caterpillar actually is going to go all the way up the string and it, it can kind of take a long time. So once we hit the go button and the caterpillar goes, it takes them a little bit of time to creep all the way up this string. However, however, this is our winning caterpillar here. Let's see where this caterpillar made it. Did they make it all the way to one meter? I don't know. Actually, no, this caterpillar did not make it to the one meter mark. This caterpillar made it this far, and this was the winning caterpillar. Now, this is where I need your help, sir, and I need the class's help, and, and this is why I'm here, actually, because I was trying to figure out, when I looked at this, I was trying to figure out like about how far the caterpillar went. So if that's like a whole meter, I don't know about you, but like I'm pretty confident that they went more than half of a meter, but I can tell that they didn't make it a full meter. So the question I want you to think about, and we're not gonna have you share it yet, we're gonna have you hold it in your brain for just a moment, is I want you to think about how far do you think the winning caterpillar actually traveled? It's right there on the screen and this is all to scale. Like this is exactly how far he went between zero and one. And I want you to make an estimate based on what you see. Whew, this might be really, really tough for us to think about here. I wonder, I want you to think about this here. I'm gonna pause and let you think about it. How would you describe how far this woolly worm caterpillar actually went? And I'm gonna give you a little bit of time here. I'm gonna pause and let you think on this. And what I would love you to do is before we do any sharing, I want you to draw a picture that will help you convince us of why your estimate makes sense. So I'm gonna show you an example of what I mean by drawing a picture. Like for me, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen here, but I've got some paper here and I'm just, if I'm gonna draw, and if this represents, I'm gonna represent like a little bar to represent the, the start to the end here. So this is like the end, this is the start. And when I looked at the caterpillar, I feel like the caterpillar, if I, I bring this screen back up here, I feel like the caterpillar probably went, oh, I don't know, somewhere around, somewhere around here. But the problem is, I want you to help me understand, like, how are you going to describe how far that is? You're gonna have to draw it and you're gonna have to kind of prove it to me somehow. Like, one thing that I know for sure is like, I feel like the halfway point, if I use like my pen cap here, my halfway point's probably somewhere like right there. That's like the halfway point. So I know it's more than half, but it's less than one hole. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time here. And then when we come back, I'm really eager to hear what you folks think. And I'm gonna do my best to try to represent what you're thinking. And you're gonna to have to help me understand what you're thinking, okay?
Awesome. Can you tell me like wh which line are you talking about? Are you talking about this line here? Oh, from here to here. So you're saying like from here to here is 25 centimeters. And so then how far would from here to here be? Interesting. And then like, how about from like here to here? It looks like my computer's kind of freezing on me here. Hopefully, hopefully it's working from here to here. Ah, interesting. So you're saying like in centimeters, you were like, wait a second. If this is the start and this is zero centimeters, you said halfway's 50 centimeters. What would the end be in centimeters? Because like this was meters. Oh my gosh, holy smoke. So in centimeters here, we've got a lot of good stuff over here. Here we have meters, that's super cool. So this is zero meters. Um, you were saying like, what would like right uh, about there be? What do you think? 25 centimeters, awesome. And you're saying this is 75 centimeters. Okay, so I'm gonna put three over four, three fourths. So this is kind of how we say this, three fourths is three fourths, and that's the symbol we use, three fourths, awesome. And this is half, I'm gonna put like percent over here. Whew, that's a lot of awesomeness, sir. Whoa, I'm wondering 75 like what? You know, like is it like 75 elephants or is it like 75? So you're saying that this three fourths of the way is the same as 75%. Interesting, I'm wondering, can anybody in the chat tell me what would halfway be as a percentage? Like, I, I wanna let you know too, you're in grade three and really you're not even supposed to know percentages until you're like at least in grade four, five, grade six especially. Holy smokes, 50%. Now something I wanna like, I wasn't planning on going here, sir, but like if you're saying like, holy smokes, this is 50%, I wanna let you know like 50%, they may not know this, but percent, cent, in French actually is a number. I don't know if anybody knows that. Like what is cent? Does anybody know numero cent in French? Maybe not, like you're, you're in grade three for heaven's sake. Holy smokes, that is 100 cents. So this is like 50 out of 100. Like I could write that as a fraction as 50 hundredths. Holy smokes. Sir, this is out of control. Like this is grade three. I don't know, I, I, I feel like you've lied to me and we're actually in a grade six class here. This is fantastic. Holy smokes. Interesting. I agree with you, like 90 feels good there. Like if this is 50, like, and then, you know, this is like, uh-oh, 80, 70, 60. How are you feeling about that? The way we have that drawn there, bud? What do you think? Do you want that 90 to stay here? like? 10 here, 10 here. How many should be between here and here? Here's what I wanna do. I wanna give you an opportunity to update your estimates, okay? We had some great estimates going on, lots of people sharing. So far, we had a lot of people saying three fourths of the way, which some others said was 75 centimeters, which others said was 75% of the way. But then we also had some others who said other values like 90 centimeters, I saw 80, uh, I saw different fractional amounts. Here's what I'm gonna have you do though. When I go ahead and I share this next screen, what I wanna share with you are the top three racers from this year's event. They are the top three racers. And here's the problem. In order for us to confirm or deny our estimates to see how close we were, we're gonna have to take these rankings. We're gonna have to figure out a way to figure out like who came in first, who came in second, who came in third, because they are the top three. Here are the top three racers for this race. Actually, uh, Caterpillar Molly went two fourths of the way, went two fourths of the way. Snowflake went three fourths of the way. Uh-oh, a lot of people said three fourths. Maybe Snowflake is the winner, I don't know yet. And the King went five sixths of the way. Whew, what I'm hoping we can do, and I wanna build on what Sir had done with you last week, 
Uh, it sounds like you did a lot of paper folding for fractions. I'm wondering if you have a piece of paper around, like I can draw my bars and I can try my best to show two fourths, three fourths, and five sixths, but that might be kind of hard to do just by drawing. So I know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of paper here and I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut myself a little bit of a length of paper, just like this. This is gonna be a bar to represent one of the lengths of the race. And I'm gonna use my trusty scissors. These are Talia's, check them out. They are nice, butterflies on sale at, I don't know where we got them, but they're fantastic. If I cut these lengths out, I'm gonna make three of them because I want to kind of compare the different distances of these worms. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut out one of the track. So here's my first track. This is gonna be for Molly. So for mine, I've got my three strips. This is gonna represent each of our racers. I'm actually gonna, for me anyway, this is, I find this helpful. Like I'm gonna go ahead and like write Molly. Uh, I'm gonna put snow for snowflake. And on this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put king. That's just for me. And that'll help me keep this organized. Now my, my wonder is though, like if I'm looking just at Molly, for example, like if I'm looking at Molly and she's two fourths, huh? I wonder how I'm gonna fold this paper in order to do two fourths and what I need to shade in. That's something I'm gonna let you think about for a minute. And then I, I look at Snowflake and I go, Snowflake's three fourths, shoot. What am I gonna do in order to show three fourths here? And then this one's really tricky for me. This one's like five sixths. How am I gonna show five sixths on this piece of paper? Hmm, I'm gonna give you a little bit of time here, sir. Sir, we're gonna let them put their thinking caps on here. And uh, I, I'd love it too, if anyone's use it, doing this on camera, like feel free to like show your neighbors like where you're at, like and show them your thinking because this could be really helpful. It's really lonely when you're by yourself at home doing this all by yourself. So, you know, show what you're up to on camera so others can sort of get an idea and see whether, uh, whether they're on the same track as you. Oh no, that's great. And the more of this that we do friends, like, you know, Sir's got a really cool tool he's helping you build. Um, I have my, fraction tower over to the side. Like I always have it available because it helps me remember which fractions are bigger than others. And you know, it would really help me with this problem if I could visualize it, but it takes a long time for me to visualize it in my mind. Um, I'm really curious to see how people do the king because like Molly, it looks like, sir, most people, you know, is anybody willing to like help explain to me, like, what do I have to do to Molly in order to show two fourths. I see some hands up, sir. Is there anybody, a new hand that wants to share? Like, how am I gonna show Molly as two fourths? Oh, so like, can I, like, should I fold it like once like this? Is that what you mean? Yeah, oh, awesome, super cool. So it looks like it was like a fold in half and then like a fold in half again. Super cool. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna open this up and like, oh, look at that. I have four pieces. I'm gonna to have to highlight this because it's really hard to see. I can, I, I see what you mean by that. I'm gonna go ahead and like show where these, like this is Molly's. I'm gonna kind of do my best here to show the outside. How do I represent two fourths there, friends? Is there any other uh, friends in the room that can help us? Like how much of this bar should I be filling in to show two fourths? Super cool. Like, so this is one fourth. This is another one fourth. This is a one fourth and this is a one fourth. These are all fourths and I only want two fourths. So here's one fourth, two fourths. Super cool. Now I'm wondering who can help me out with snow? Like snow was, uh, snowflake I think it was, was three fourths. I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna fold this the same way. Who can help me? Like once I get my fourths going here, how many boxes am I gonna fill up for Snowflake? I'm just gonna draw this out here as we wait for a friend to share. Here's Snowflake, look at this. And you're saying three boxes. So my question to the group is then, um, who, who went further, Molly or Snowflake? 
this is three fourths, this is two fourths. If I show them like side by side, like this is the race going up the string, looks like, looks like Snowflake went further, holy smokes. Oh, the king was five sixths. How am I gonna do five six? This is really tough. I'm I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. Holy smokes! How am I gonna split this paper up into sixth? I need six equal pieces here. Oh, I'm gonna give you a moment here to think that through, and then maybe you can describe it to me. Help me out. I'm wondering if anyone can get close, and it's ah, it's it's really challenging. But I I love challenging my friends in grade three. So let's see what you come up with there. Hmm, how am I gonna fold this? And like, when I'm paper folding, before I actually fold, I kinda check and I look at this and I go, well, this is gonna give me half, one on this side, one on this side. Huh, how could I get three pieces? A lot of people might try to do it this way, fold it to the middle, but then look at the size of these two pieces. I have two small pieces and then like one really big piece on this side. That's not gonna work for thirds. Huh, I think this might be helpful for thirds, doing something like, kinda like this, like look at my layers here. I have like one, two, three. That would be, did you use any strategies or did you just experiment? Like what did you do? Ooh, interesting. So you went in half and then what did you do? Okay, so if I do that, I'm gonna, uh, and I've got a couple extra strips too, so if anyone has any other strategies too, we'll be able to do that. So let's, I'm gonna fold it in half like you did. There's my fold. Then what, what did you mean, like how far should I go with this extra fold? I see you folding on the camera. Like should I go all the way to here? Is that gonna work for you? Like all the way like this? Like to right around there maybe? Super cool, let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, so I'm trying to think in my mind, like what's gonna happen? This is really hard work. Holy smokes. Okay, I'm gonna try my best here. And remember everybody, this doesn't have to be perfect, right? Like this is us like experimenting a little bit. And that means you might have to go through more than one strip when you try. Like you might, if we open this up and there's like nine spots or nine parts, then uh-oh, I'm probably gonna just start over and try like a new strip and see what we do. But let's see what Paisley comes up with here. If I open this thing up, holy smokes, it's hard to see. Uh, let me, I'm gonna make it angled there so hopefully everyone can see it. Do we have six uh, parts there, everybody? How do you feel? Holy smokes, I'm gonna just like outline this for everybody. I'm wondering, sir, uh, Paisley, first of all, I wanna thank you for being so brave and sharing with your microphone today, especially with like, you know, we've only known each other for two days now, like not even two days. This is my second day in the class with you all. All right, so there's our six spots. Um, who can help me? Like how many of those should get shaded in for the, the king? Wow, look at that. That is fantastic. How did you go about it though, I'm wondering? Because like, to me, I'm, I'm so confused. Like how did you know like where to put the lines? Like how do you know where to, uh, you know, where to actually like partition those spots. What do you think? Things, and the more you do this, the more experience you get, the better you will be. Like, I'm still working on it myself. You wanna know what my, my daughter did yesterday? Cause she drew it as well. So she kind of drew a box like this and then she took some pens or pencils. I'm gonna use markers. And she went like this. She was like, well, there's half. And she was like, huh. If I go like this, well, there's fourths. Okay, we're getting closer. Uh, if I go like this, look at that, there's thirds. Like it's not perfect, but it's a, a pretty good idea. Uh, let's add more here, like how many spots is this? One, two, three, four, five. And then I try to like arrange it to see if I can make them as equal as possible. Like this is another strategy. And then what she did, is then she folded, she kind of like made a, a little mark in each spot and then she did her folds that way. Like this is one good way to do it. And look at that, if we put our markers down, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that's okay. This one looks kind of small, but maybe I could adjust that a little bit. Like check this out. If I adjust it, 
holy smokes, it's almost like it's almost like a sixth is a third, like thirding a half. It's like I split my half into thirds. That's really interesting. That's something that might help me one day. And then let, let's compare it to this one. Like, let's see where those lines are. Look at that, pretty close, eh? Holy smokes, how is everybody feeling? I wanna see in the chat, like, how is everyone feeling about this? Like, is everyone good on being able to make some, either some strips or being able to draw? I think here too, I'm just gonna fill this in because I'm, I'm pretty sure Taylor had confirmed for us like five sixths would be five of these all filled in. Look at that. I'm wondering like, who's gonna be brave and tell us like, who do you think actually won this race? What do you think? The King, Paisley's feeling good about. Awesome, who feels good about the King? Can I see any thumbs up in, the, in your camera if you're feeling good about the King? Feeling pretty good? Awesome, let's confirm whether it actually was the king because actually, guess what? I have camera footage, everybody. We've got Molly, we've got Snowflake, we've got the king. Uh, they must still be in the locker room getting ready here because I don't see them, but wait. Oh, there they are, here we go. All right, uh, sir, go ahead. Uh, start us off with an on your mark, get set, go. Go for it. Yep. Yeah. Here we go, let's check this thing out. Uh, I, uh-oh, the king is in last place right now. I don't know if we did this correctly. Holy, oh, oh my gosh, Snowflake's speeding up. And holy smokes, look at that, the king. With the win, as predicted, I, uh, I am so impressed, sir, with all of this fractional thinking that we've got going on here. Holy smokes. Um, what, do, what do you say, sir, on the count of three, we all do a one clap? It's gonna sound ridiculous, but everybody turn your mic on. On the count of three, we're gonna do one clap together to celebrate that we all got the king as first place. And it's gonna be so out of sync because the internet is gonna be delayed, okay? Does that sound okay, everybody? Here we go. One, two, Three, one clap. Nice job. I love like the echo of clap all across the county coming together right across our internet lines. Fantastic. Sir, how are you feeling and uh, what are your plans moving forward? Like, do you want to uh, give them or offer them a consolidation prompt or, or do you have something else that you wanted to move into? I'm all ears and I'm all game. What are you thinking? Here's what we can do. This, this sounds like a great opportunity, sir, for you to get a heads up and for me to get a heads up because I'm hoping you'll share it back with me. Uh, but if we give them a question, because there's actually, I have some data from last year's competition, like from two summers ago, and I'm curious on who won. And I'm wondering if anyone can help us um, by actually figuring it out for this last year's data to either paper fold to prove it or to draw and like split it up. But here's what we have from last year, sir. We have this consolidation prompt right here, Silly Willy, all right, sir? Like who would have thought Silly Willy would be in the running for winning? Silly Willy traveled a distance of two thirds of the way while Yo Gabba Gabba, we saw Yo Gabba Gabba's name in the video yesterday. Yo Gabba Gabba traveled a distance of three fifths of a meter. Holy smoke, sir. We need to figure out who traveled the furthest. And most importantly, everyone, we want you to be able to convince someone because like, I don't know about you, sir, but like I see two thirds, three fifths, that's really hard for me to visualize. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit of practicing with my paper folding, meaning you might need a couple extra strips, right? Don't get frustrated if you fold it the first time. Like when I do fifths, like sometimes I try it and it comes out and then I'm like, uh, I look at this and I go, oh shoot, they're all different sizes. That's not gonna, and there's only four pieces. Ah, oh, darn, I'm gonna put this one to the side, toss it away and I'm gonna try it again. All right, so this one I'm gonna leave up on the screen for you friends. 
Sir, I'll send it in an email to you as well so you have it for, you know, just for your records there. Hey there, Math Moment Makers. Wow, you made it to the end. I'm so proud of you. Uh, you went through, obviously I edited out some of the things like, for example, the students actually talking uh, for privacy reasons and things along those lines. Um, but I did wanna give you an idea of what that workflow could look like with your students in a virtual environment. Of course, in a face-to-face -face environment, this is gonna be an awesome, awesome experience. It's gonna be easier to formatively assess and walk around the room and see what students are working on in their groups and their randomized groups. Uh, if you're using vertical non-permanent surfaces, like these are all things that we lose in this online world. However, consider opening up a breakout room or, or giving students an opportunity and then sharing out through a OneNote or through a collaborative working space like a Google Doc. Or if you're like me, I like to use Knowledge Hook snapshots quite a bit, uh, which you can check out at knowledgehook.com. So again, I just wanna remind you, uh, make sure if you enjoyed this video, please take the time to go ahead and actually subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, hit the bell. Uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure that you're following Make Math Moments uh, and join our K through 12 Math Moment Makers group, our private Facebook group, uh, so that you get notifications when we go live, as well as when we upload uh, tutorial videos like this one, or uh, just different lesson videos on pedagogical practice, or how you can make your math class more visual and conceptual. So that's it for me. Uh, make sure, again, also, uh, we've got a few things for you. Again, you can go check out those units, those problem-based units. We've got them there ready and available for you to, to dive into. And then also something else to make sure that you check out is our three-part framework guidebook. You can do that from our main website, makemathmoments.com forward slash framework will get you there. Again, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.